Hello ladies and gentlemen, here is another position uh, for you to ponder and study along with me today. This game is from the uh, 32nd ECC Open, which took place in uh, October of 2016, <clears throat> so approximately a year ago, uh, between Alexander Moisienko, a 37-year-old grandmaster uh, from the Ukraine, who's uh, very experienced and has been a GM for about 17 years, <clears throat> and with the Black Pieces, uh, Chinese Grandmaster uh, Li Chao, uh, sometimes known in ch chess circles as Li Chao B. And the reason is, is there is another Chinese player named Li Chao. So this Li Chao is sometimes known as Li Chao 2 or Li Chao uh, B. Um, just a little bit about uh, Li Chao. Um, there's an interesting uh, a story about him in 2015. Uh, he defeated Peter Laco in a match and uh, was rapidly rising through the rankings. Uh, I believe he was uh, near the top 10, uh, number 14 at the time. And um, I guess uh, the way the story goes um, uh, from Ian Rogers was that Li Chao was banned from all Chinese uh, teams and tournaments, meaning that he couldn't get on the Olympic team um, resulting from a dispute from one of the, of the powerful uh, chess sponsors of uh, Beijing Chess Club, so they kind of uh, put pressure uh, on the you know Chinese Chess Federation to kind of shun him nationally. So this forced Li Chao to go and play on the European circuit in the uh, Bundesliga, uh, you know, to earn basically earn a living, and uh, it kind of came back to bite them because then Li Chao started you know rising through the ranks and becoming real prominent and stuff and he's he's gonna it like force the uh, Chinese Federation to embrace him you know like um uh, you know so it's a, uh that was an interesting uh tidbit uh to find out but um oh and he did defeat uh Peter Laco in the match uh and what was interesting about that match maybe I'll look at that um one of these days what was interesting about that match is that uh Lee Chow was frequently outplayed uh strategically by Laco However, Laco will fall victim to some type of tactical blow. All right. Uh, so you see that a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you see that a lot in, in matches, especially between like older and uh, younger uh, grandmasters. You know, the tactical uh, blow uh, will will often spoil uh, somebody's uh, great uh, you know position. Now, let's look at this position. Again, Moisienko has the white pieces, Lee Chow the black pieces. What's going on here? Well, we can see that um, white is a bit better here, and that's basically due to the uh, pawn structure. Okay, um, all of white's pawns are, are together and pretty, and make one solid pawn chain uh, right into the center of the board. And his bishop is beautifully placed on the optical optimal diagonal on uh, f6 cutting right through the central squares his rook white's rook is attacking uh so it's a direct threat right now so it's not white's move but his uh, direct threat to to capture the uh, bishop on a2 so uh with that said white is definitely a little better black uh is not too bad off the it's opposite color bishops Okay, but he has to deal with these ugly uh, pawns that are, um, you know, pretty weak and need uh, to be watched by the pieces. All right. So the strategy, the strategy is, is quite simple. Black uh, should not be thinking, you know, here to uh, really try to queen these pawns per se. Uh, it's not realistic with the placement of the pieces. Um, Black's king is far, far away. Uh, his bishop is is under attack, and his rook is on the seventh rank, uh, playing defense. So uh, his pieces are scattered about, and so Black's mindset should be uh, more of a consolidation, uh, protection, right? And instead of trying to say like try to make a queen out of one of those uh, pass pawns on the A or B file. So first of all, starting with the right attitude toward the position, understanding, hey, I'm a little bit worse here. And it is not realistic for me to try to make a counterattack at this time. All right. A positive for black is having possession of the D file. 
It's very important. That's a that's a positive. So um, what I would be thinking if I was black would probably be to play my bishop to c4, right? First of all, getting it out of harm's way. And with the idea of playing move like a6 and tucking my bishop at b5 and then waiting with the pawns and then bringing my king to the center. All right, because at that point, the only way white can win is he has to make something out of, out of that four to two majority. Now, black's pieces will be excellently placed to to uh, hinder that and stop that. And then at an opportune moment, once black's pieces are, are together and coordinated and optimally placed, maybe then he could start sneaking those pawns forward to create counterplay on the queen side and keep white honest if he tries to press uh, on with his pawns. So all in all, I think the game should end in a draw, all right? But you have to be careful here, especially as black. Let's see what happened. Here, uh, Lee Child played the move uh, bishop to b3. Um, one idea that sticks out is this idea uh, just to trade off rooks immediately and go into this opposite bishop ending, which would be nice, of course, for black. However, it's faulty because of... Blacks of white's next move. Moisienko just simply played king f2. All right. And now here's was where here's where I feel um, Lee Chow had the wrong idea in mind. He played this move c5 and he starts pushing these pawns. King e3. Moisienko is just improving his pieces. See how he brings the king to the center. All right. And he's not trying to move his pawns or do anything as of yet. King f7. Attacking the bishop. Bishop goes back one square, stays in the center. And now Lee Child plays g5, put, placing another pawn forward. For what? All right, to stop f4, is that is that really a big, you know, big necessity? What it does is create a weakness in the position that allows, black, it allows white an attack where he should have never had an attack. Rook a5, now, the, now how do you protect this pawn? Okay. Now you say c4. c4 doesn't work because now you drop the pawn on a7 to bishop d4 check. So just like that, out of a real simple position, okay, not not um, not um uh, evaluating the position co correctly, black got in trouble real quick. Excuse me, white got in trouble. Uh, yes, black got in trouble real quick. So bishop c4. Right? He just dropped the dropped the pawn out of the clear blue just like that. Can you believe it, right? 2700 grandmaster just dropped dropped the pawn just king e2 bishop a6 from black. King e1, rook e3. And you can see Lee Chow is looking for that tactical blow, right? And remember I told you that he was outplayed by Laco in their match strategically, but often was able to land t tactical blows to turn the tide. And that's what you can see he's depending on now. He's hoping to land some type of blow that will compensate for his uh, positional um, missteps. But it wasn't to be here. Rookie 2. Moisienko just simply tucked this king in a safe area. Rook A2. And notice... This is what I want you to notice, people. Notice that Moisenko has not moved one, one one of his pawns yet. He just did all all of this happen with peace with peace movement and Black being impatient and destroying his own position. All all uh, Moisenko did was make a couple of rook rook moves and he moved the bishop to e5 and a couple of king moves. That's it. King g4. Notice he doesn't even have to do that much to get to the pawn because Lee Chow moved. Put the pawn in g5. You just brought it to him. How do you protect the pawn now? Right? You can play h6. Right? You can play... You can try h6 here. But then just simply rook c7. I'm sorry, not rook c7. Uh, rook c6 is good. <clears throat> right? Easy. Obvious move probably should have been played. Just take the pawn. But then the bishop just simply drops back. Okay, and then you just snatch the pawn on the uh, the next move. And then you had these two passes. 
So instead, Li Chao played bishop f1. King takes g5. What does he care? Bishop takes g2. King f4. And now those e and f pawns are just free. Bishop d4. a4. Rook c7. And again, as I said in the beginning, I think your uh, thought process is important because... If you if you know from the beginning that there's no way that those pawns can really make it, then you're not gonna try to push those. You're not gonna try to queen those pawns. And this is how the game uh, continued. E5. So eventually now, Black's excuse me, White's threat uh, to push his pawns becomes too serious, and Black has to abandon his uh, a pawn. Rook c2. Bishop d6, and you can see uh, white forming their little mating net. Rook g7. Rook c4, and now king f5. And Lee Chow was forced to resign because the next move uh, after, say, bishop takes f3, for instance. Notice he just left the pawn there. It's going to be e6 with the, uh, with the mate threat on the g-file. So that was like a real simple ending. But uh, again, going back to... What I was saying at the, the at the beginning, that's why your evaluation has to be on point. Because if you evaluate this correctly and you realize you're, you're, if you're black, you're looking at this correctly, you say, hey, my pieces are, are scattered about. Because when I was looking, I, I, you know, I studied the position, of course, before I made the video. And so I'm looking at the position and I see, okay. Realistically, I cannot push these. You know, I'm looking at it from Black's perspective. I'm saying, realistically, I cannot. I'm not going to be able to queen these pawns, right? My pieces are not coordinated, too scattered. I got a piece that's directly attacked on a2. My king is way in the corner. The pawns are going to need support. All right. I'm slightly worse, so therefore, I need to concentrate on defense. I got a good. Um, rook on d7 that uh, is control of the open d file. I got a pawn. I got three pawns on light squares. So if I could just get the other pawn on a light square, I don't have to worry about my opponent's bishop, and I should be seeking a draw here. So back to this position. This is the type of idea that I had at first. It's not deep analysis, but again, you know the plan. The, I believe it's the right plan. So, say for instance, bishop c4. And my Again, my idea is just to play bishop to b5 and a6 and kind of hold the position. Okay, so a6, bishop c3, and now bishop b5. And you can see how there's, there, it's very difficult for white, white to win. The only really winning chance he has is he has to kind of make something out of this 4 to 2 majority. Okay, but... Black's pieces are in better position to handle any kind of pawn uh, pawn events. He'll be be able to trade some pawns, and he'll be able to, be able to use his opposite color uh, bishops, bishop, excuse me, in combination with his rook to harass the king. So let's say, for example, king g3. You know, just making some random moves. Rook d3, rook c1, c5. C4, see, and you see how the pawn stays supported by the bishop. And basically, you're keeping white honest in the position. You're doing just enough to where he has to kind of keep an eye on, on the pawn. All right? But you're not getting reckless about it. You're not just throwing the pawns forward and then dropping the pawns. You're pushing your pawns forward in a way to say, hey, you got to watch my pawns too. Again, this is just sample, sample stuff. Okay, so bishop b3, for example, uh, bishop e1, king e7, bishop c3, king f7. Again, just a sample line, but just to show you how it's very difficult for white to, to you know, convert this very... He has a small advantage, so it's small advantages are hard to convert. You know, if you don't create any additional weaknesses... Is very difficult, and notice how the weaknesses that we stated in the beginning, um, Black's two um, isolated pawns. That's all that Black still has. Black didn't take on any other weaknesses. That's how you. That's how you. You know, if, if you're playing defense, you don't want to add additional weaknesses. You know, you you're stuck 
with the the uh, weakness so you say okay either you want to try to get rid of it and if you can't get rid of it you don't want to add any more so this is like some good defense here in contrast to actually what happened and we see the pawns getting uh thrown up and you know in an almost irresponsible manner with uh c5 and g5 again there's no you know g5 like why why are you doing that Okay, and then, you know, the end just came swiftly, the pawn dropped, and, you know, that was a wrap. So, that is it for uh, this video. Please like and subscribe, and, um, you know, I'll be glad to answer any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.